you know, when Carl Lewis arrived at the track, he got out of his car ready uh, to get out there and, and be the best that he could be in training. One of his Santa Monica teammates had overtaken his senior partner. Leroy Burrell was World Athletics' new fastest man. But Lewis was reserving his energy for the big events. Some guys, they got to win them all. If they don't win them all, then they start doubting themselves. Um, Carl, Carl wasn't like that at all. You know, Carl could lose a race and like, oh, well. <laughs> I wasn't really in good shape anyway, so. I think it really all boils down to he never really doubted his ability. Carl was able to say, you know what, I might not be in great shape, but you know, I still got it up here. You know, I still got it in my head. And I know that even though I'm not at my best this meet or this week or even this year, next year I'll be just fine. Some guys can't do that. Going into the 1991 World Championships in Tokyo, few gave Lewis a chance against Burrell. I think going in, I may have, may have beaten Carl like eight, nine races in a row or something like that. Leroy was the top sprinter during that time, and Leroy is right on his game. And he was, he was beating Carl. Carl came to me and said, something's wrong. These guys are leaving me, and I don't know, I don't understand why. Carl came back, and I think he may have had, you know, a week or so at home with, with Coach Teles to kind of work on, on, on the problems that he was having. And when we came back and finally were able to train together, we went back to Tokyo, uh, Carl was looking a lot, a lot better. And I was thinking at that point, boy, this ain't gonna be easy. He's, he's kind of gotten things a little bit better there. As the new world record holder, Burrell was the clear favorite in the 100 meter final. But in typical fashion, Lewis ran his race in phases, storming home to break Burrell's world record in a time of 9.86 seconds. At the age of 30, he produced his greatest ever sprint performance. That race was exactly the way he wanted to run, and the way I told him to run. And uh, so he broke the world record, but I didn't expect a world record. This is the most special day of my life as, a, as an athlete. Um, I felt that I could win it. I felt I had to run the perfect race. I, I ran the best race I can run at this point in my career. What more fitting and honor than to lose your world record to not only the greatest sprinter in the world, uh, but also to a good friend and training partner. Lewis had still not realized one of his main ambitions, to break Bob Beeman's legendary long jump record. He jumped a personal best in Tokyo, but still came up short. Mike Powell produced something special, a world record of 8.95 meters, inflicting Lewis's first long jump defeat in 10 years. But as Lewis and his coach always stressed, it was the Olympics that mattered most. In Barcelona in 1992, he won gold in the long jump for a third successive time. And then another gold in the 4x100 relay, leading a Santa Monica-based team to a world record time. Lewis was now a veteran. Injuries and poor form meant he missed the next two world championships but his focus was on the 96 Olympics in Atlanta. I'm going to have a season next year that's going to surprise everybody. And that's, that's not um, you know, talking, it's not brag, it's not boasting. It's just saying what I'm going to work for, and I know physically what I can still achieve and what I expect to do. Lewis trained for the long jump like never before. His longevity in such a physically demanding event was astonishing, especially at the age of 36. I think in 96, he was ready to jump really far. And I thought he was as fast as he's ever been on the runway in 96. On a windy day in Atlanta's Olympic Stadium, Carl Lewis won the long jump for an incredible fourth time. His ninth Olympic gold. Carl kind of took his career full circle because you know he started as a long jumper. And, and he, he had a tremendous amount of success and won several medals in the sprints. And the long jump was always there. I mean, it was just like his bread and butter. I think you, you're going to get back to what you've done, done best and what, where you're, you're most comfortable. And, and I actually think Carl was probably most comfortable in the long jump. Right now. It was the fitting end to a career spanning 17 years. In 1997, Lewis made the decision to retire.
I didn't know what it would be like to retire. I had no clue what it would be like five years ago, ten years ago, three years ago. I didn't know. But when you've done what you feel, um, when you've accomplished everything you feel you can accomplish, then it's, it's okay. And, and I didn't know that. Now I do. Nine Olympic gold medals, eight world championship golds. The first man to win the Olympic 100 meters twice. Carl Lewis was the greatest sprinter of his generation and the greatest long jumper of all time. I think he did an incredible job of learning the fundamentals and the principles of sprinting, you know, from an early age and even and, and mastering them, you know, to such an extent that he could still execute them even though, you know, 80,000 people are watching. And those things take years um, to learn. And I think that's the thing that separates him from everyone else. Carl just did an amazing job, you know, just, just under pressure. And I think the mental strength, you know, that he brought um, to the sport and to sprinting, you know, is something that, you know, should be, you know, emulated. Today, his legacy is clear. He helped to professionalize an amateur sport. Carl Lewis was an athlete who performed at the very top and never doubted his own ability. His mechanics were flawless. I mean, he was one of the only sprinters that can run gracefully. The longevity that he had in the sport, too many sprinters can't do, you know? So um, I, I ranked that right there number one. I mean, because we got to understand Usain Bolt is trying to walk in Carl Lewis's shoe. We know Carl Lewis done it first, so everyone wants to do what he done. I mean, I think when Usain Bolt talks about being a legend, you know, he's basically referring to Carl Lewis, because Carl Lewis is a legend.